Mmm. Look what I got. King's Tales. Author? Cohen King. Totally sounds like a Stephen King kind of author, yeah? Well, this Cohen King just so happens to be one of my students. Love you, Cohen. This is so cool. You can even find it on Amazon. Hey folks, it's Kayla Ebby with the Educator Chipotle Challenge doing an educator shout out interview with the author of King's Tales. Who are you? What's your story? Uh, well, hello, uh, I'm Cohen King and I'm going into 10th grade now at Da Vinci Junior High, or Da Vinci High School actually, <laughs> uh, in Davis, California. So um, yeah, I wrote this book in 8th grade. So, two years ago, and I wrote it for a project in eighth grade, uh, and it's the biggest project of the year, and it's actually my favorite project that I've ever done, because <laughs> um, you just have a lot of freedom with it, and so people would choose a topic, and they would explore the topic, and they would just get, get as much information about it as they can, and they'd make a really huge uh, art project about it, and they'd also do like a whole presentation. Um, so the presentation was like 20 minutes and uh, yeah so for the project I studied self-publishing and I would uh, look at the differences between self-publishing and traditional publishing and like what all that what all that is and I looked at how to self-publish and what resources you could use so I used Amazon's uh, self-publishing service called Create Space to, I wrote this book and then I used that to publish it and uh, actually my brother created the cover of it because he was uh, doing graphics design at the point at that point he still does graphics design and he's really good at it so yeah uh, yeah he did the cover of that and we designed it together I'm impressed mm -hmm. this was awesome do you still like creative writing, Cohen? Uh, I haven't written in a while, but I still do. It's a really good way to like express yourself, and uh, if you have ideas, you can just write them down. I, I often don't finish my stories, so this was like a, a very rare experience, <laughs> finishing five stories in a row. Yeah. Uh, one of the stories in there, I think it's like the third story, it's called The Loneliest Man. Oh, fourth story, is... Uh, that one I wrote way before I started writing the book. Oh. Uh, and I enjoyed it so much that I actually put it into the book. Uh, so that one was pretty fun. I wrote it as just like a little class creative writing assignment thing. So, yeah. Uh, and, and as you mentioned on the, the back cover of this book, they're all different and unique stories. And they're, they're fiction stories. <laughs> However, how... How were you inspired to write these particular stories? Um, just random ideas. Yeah. Uh, like, very, very different. I, some of the ideas I've had before, um, when I decided to write a book for the project, I actually sat down, I went on a Google document, and just wrote out as many ideas as I had. And I picked the ones that really spoke to me. So, like, the first story is about a man who switches bodies with his dog and uh, he has to like figure out what life is like as a dog. He lives a day as his dog and his dog lives a day as a human. So. Yeah, that was, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I mean, each of them, I could, I could see them playing out. Yeah. I could imagine them uh, playing in my mind's eye and that was, that was fun to, to experience. And, I'm a relatively slower reader, so it felt it felt good to read this and be able to start and finish it in a in yeah. a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, it's it's a short book, but it also has it has a lot of content in it because it does. it's different stories. Right. So like it feels like more than it actually is. <laughs> it it does because each each story although short you really um the choice of words really gives uh 
readers, or at least me as a reader, that imagery and that um, kind of experience within within the story, as if I were there yeah. as one of the characters, or looking looking inward. I wrote it with. Uh, as I wrote it, I would picture the story in my mind, and uh, I could like picture a scene and just imagine and write out what I could see uh, in my mind. So that's one of the things that I think I have to work on with writing still is writing. I write linear linearly, mm. so all my stories I write, I don't, I don't really pick and choose parts and like. So the, I think my favorite story in that book is the last one, and that one. Uh, one of the reasons I think it's good is because I had the ending planned out in my head. Mm. And so I actually wrote the ending before I wrote any of the beginning of the story. Wow. And so I knew exactly where I was going. Yeah. So, That's really cool. Yeah. And that, that last story kind of uh, relates to the question that you asked me before we started recording of um, if, you could, if you could choose between going back a few minutes in time versus and nobody knows about it or years in your past and everybody else would know about it yeah the existence yeah. that's awesome although with that uh with going back many years and uh, everyone remembering it. If you went back before someone was born, what would happen if they were born and remembered a past life of like being older? Oh my gosh. That'd be really strange. Yeah. Like you could be born with like a baby genius where they, <laughs> they already know how to speak the moment they get out of the womb. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that baby's going to Canada real soon. They're gonna, they're gonna know how to speak French. I'll, yeah. I'll take them with me. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, you said that you you sold this to how many people about? Uh, I'm not sure how many people, but I made about $70 uh, from selling the book. So I, uh, I bought the book on Amazon myself. I couldn't, after I published it, because I published it through a different company, I had to buy the copies myself. However, I do get royalties, so I can buy it for cheaper than anyone else can. So um, I get royalties whenever when anyone buys it, but what I could do is I bought a bunch of copies for $5, and then I sold them in person for $7, uh, and I could sell them and like sign them uh, in person. So as I was doing my report, <laughs> yeah. So as I was doing the, the uh, presentation, like after I was done, I was like, and you can buy some copies here for $7. And Gosh. so a bunch of people came and uh, bought the copies. The fun thing about self-publishing, though, is it's actually free to publish a book. You can self-publish whatever you want. It's free of charge. However, you just have to buy the copies yourself. So, hmm. yeah. That is good to know. Yeah. The thing with like traditional publishing is it is also it's also technically free. However, there's a lot more rules to it because you're working with a company to actually like write the book. Sure. So uh, with a traditional publisher, you usually like have your book and you will send them a copy of your book, but they also they will take most of the profit as well. Where um, Traditional publishing is generally better because it's it gives you a lot more publicity. Like this one, I wasn't really looking for publicity, it was just for like a project. Yeah. But if I wanted to actually write like a novel and published it, publish it, I would go to a traditional publisher okay. because they, they know how to put it in stores and they know how to like uh, get it publicized uh, and get it to people more than like once you self-publish, you have to do everything else yourself. Sure. You have to, uh, like, give it to people, you have to sell it yourself. Um, I mean, you could probably make a deal with some store or something, but still you have to do it individually instead of a company backing you up. So am I hearing you, Cohen, um, recommend to people wanting to publish a book to go the traditional route? Yeah. 
Uh, if you want to publish a book for, like, just publishing sake, where um, self-publishing is really good for, like, poets and stuff who they do readings and then uh, after they, they do it, they can uh, just have, like, a bunch of books that you can come and buy. Yeah. Uh, like, my mentor, who, like, gave me a lot of information about self-publishing and stuff, they self-publish a lot of books because they're a poet, and they, uh, they'll go to, like, uh, places and just read some of their poems, and then people who want to buy them, they've just self-published a bunch of copies of their book, and they can have uh, people come and buy them if they want. Um, traditional publishing is a lot more, it's a lot harder to do, because you have to, like, send copies of your book. Sometimes, uh, like, once you give a company your book, they have complete control over it, mm. where they can edit it pretty much however you, however they want. I mean, they'll, they'll still ask you, like, uh, if something is too much to change, but uh, sometimes people have traditionally published a book, and when it comes out, it's completely different than what they wrote because it's been edited so much. Sure. So, yeah. Do you think that there would be a market out there for a book on the Educator Chipotle Challenge? I mean, if you wrote one, then... Uh, yeah, I guess it's, it's an interesting story how you're doing this challenge with uh, so many people. <laughs> yeah, and for so long as well. A yeah. whole year of eating Chipotle every day, so... Yeah. I wonder yeah. if anybody would buy it. Probably. You think so? Thing. Yeah. Because there are people who would find that interesting. For what? Cohen, yeah. name and describe one or more educators who have had a positive impact in your life and how they've made a difference for you. Uh, Alright, so I actually have a few. Um, so the first one being Sean Glantz from the uh, Da Vinci Junior High and he taught a course that uh, it was actually my first time taking a course similar and it was computer science discoveries so that uh, he's really the the real reason I got into coding so much is because I took that course I learned just a little bit about computers and stuff like that and um, I didn't know too much going into it. I had no idea what it was going to be like, but I just wanted to learn about that. Uh, like, I, I wanted to learn about coding and how that kind of thing works. Mm -hmm. So I took that class, and like the first day, I just really liked this teacher, and um, he really helped out with that class. He was amazing, and like. He helped me out so much with the with the coding and that class. Uh, Any time I got to school, I would always be looking forward to this class, um, and I made a lot of friends in that class as well. So it was just super helpful, and I'm really happy that he's teaching the advanced course at the high school actually. So I'll get to see him again, yes. and <laughs> he's just an amazing teacher. So uh, if you're going to Da Vinci. You should take that course if you're interested in computer science. It's it's phenomenal. Um, we learned HTML and CSS and a lot of JavaScript. And so JavaScript was the main thing that I liked. We did a lot of projects where we made games and things like that. And so I made a game called Gordon, wait, Gord the Gnome's Waldorf Adventure because I am originally a Waldorf student. So. I decided, uh, there was a lot of jokes about how Waldorf is an Amish wizarding school, <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I've not heard of that before. And how there's a lot of gnomes and stuff, and so that's kind of a joke among the, the Waldorf people, <laughs> especially Davis Waldorf. So, uh, I decided to make a, a game about a gnome who's, uh, fighting off some eurythmists, which are just, like, dancers. Eurythmy is a, uh, like... It's taught at every Waldorf school. It's like a form of dance. It's similar to ballet, but it translates to uh, rhythmic. Wait, I think it's like rhythmic movement or something. Um, harmonious movement. Harmonious. And movement. so it's like a group thing where you're in forms and you all like walk around in different forms and stuff. And it has its own like language to it, kind of, where 
uh, there's sounds that you make with your arms, so it's like, like, puh. So that's, that's like P, puh. And, um, it's kind of weird, but <laughs> it's really weird. You know what, uh, my whole class, our entire, like, journey through Wallow, we were trying to figure out what everything was and, like, why we were doing it. But, uh, Wait, where was I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> Rhythmic movement so, and Waldorf is so your so game I, with gnomes. Yeah, thank you. Uh-huh. So, uh, anyways, the the game is you're a gnome and you're fighting off these dancers, and they're all they're doing your rhythmic towards you, and you have to collect these acorns because the uh, the symbol for Davis Waldorf is an acorn. Okay. So, okay. So yeah, you right go on. around collecting acorns, and uh, I had to write the code for every interaction in that, so you press A and D to move back and forth, and so I had to write, like, different if statements and all kinds of different blocks of code for that, and, um, Mr. Glance just helped us through all of it, and it was just, he's super fun, he made that class a really enjoyable experience, and, uh, I think it's because of him that I'm so interested in computer science now. So, uh, I was actually uh, coming into the year going from 8th grade because of so much stress in 8th grade, I was like a little bit depressed. And so this class really brought me out of that and it gave me kind of a purpose. So now, over the summer actually, I've been working with a group of people online to create our own game. and. I don't do much of the coding for that, but I do make 3D models now. So I've been working with 3D modeling programs on the computer to make different like weapons and stuff. And I'm trying to learn how to make armor now in uh, 3D modeling. So yeah, that really brought me to computers. Shout out to Mr. Glance. Yeah, Mr. Look Glance. Thank you. That's so. awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that story. You have two more educators to shout out to? Yep. At least? So, the, uh, the first one is Uta Lubeck. Um, Uta Lubeck was like a mother to my class. Uh, in Waldorf, in Davis Waldorf, it's first through eighth. And so, you start out in first grade with a teacher and you go all the way from first through fourth with that one teacher. And so, you really grow a bond between all your classmates and all the teachers and uh, your teacher becomes like a mother to the class and Uta Lubeck uh, right now she's actually suffering from cancer and so it's it's hard times but uh, we had a birthday party with her and it was amazing our whole class sang some songs to her she's German so we all sang uh, Edelweiss and dance the waltz, wow. and um, it's it was amazing. In fourth grade, we had a project where it was called the Animal Project, where we picked an animal, we studied it, and we did a whole report on it. And I chose turtles because uh, my first word was actually turtles or turtle, uh, and so I picked turtles and studying them. Now turtles are my favorite animal. Uh, and so because of that, when uh, we graduated from fourth grade, moving into fifth grade, and we got a new teacher, Miss Lubeck gave me this uh, like cl- crystalline turtle that she had gotten in Kenya. She taught in Kenya for a few years, and so she gave me this turtle she had gotten there. And um, so uh, I really love Miss Lubeck. She was, she's amazing. Um, and going into fifth grade brings me to my next teacher, which is uh, Miss Clarkin, Kirsten Clarkin. Um, and she took us from she took my class from fifth through eighth grade. And uh, one funny thing with her is she she originally had uh, blonde hair, and then. Uh, or, yeah, was it? It was blonde hair, I think. And she, um, in the beginning of fifth grade, she tried to dye her hair, like, a little red. And it turned out to be, like, really bright red. So she, she tried to, like, bleach it, and it didn't work. 
And so she took this like really dark dye and dyed her hair. So her hair was dark, but it turns out it was like one of those like permanent dyes. So for our entire time from fifth through eighth, her hair was dark, which wasn't her natural hair color. So yeah. at the end of eighth grade, it finally became blonde again. And so it was weird because her hair was changing shades through our entire journey. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, in seventh grade, we had a whole block about surprises, and, um, at one point, she came in, and to surprise us, she came in and started throwing starbursts at us, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then, at the end of the block, the biggest surprise of all, she was pregnant, and so the beginning of eighth grade she was out on maternity leave and uh now she has a beautiful little baby girl named Sersha uh that was a few years ago now so yeah. Sersha's about two um which is pretty crazy she's walking now she's talking and um yeah so it was it was interesting going from Miss Lubeck who uh Miss Lubeck's like 70 something now so she was she was older when she was teaching us so going from Miss Lubeck to this very young teacher and it was actually her first time teaching uh, it was her first time teaching uh, actually yeah first time teaching in general I was about to say first time teaching a Waldorf class yeah but um, so we were kind of the guinea pigs we were her first class and uh she took us from fifth through eighth, and so I've had about three mothers in my life because mm. uh, of those two. So that that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like just those little snippets of those stories, I could tell Cohen how connected and meaningful those relationships are mm -hmm. and were during that time that you were with them yeah. um, in class and with your cohort at Waldorf School. Um, wow. Yeah, so I actually, I went to Sersha's first birthday party nice. and I am proud to say that I was the one who took the picture picture of them holding Sersha. So. Oh, look you know. at you. <laughs> so years back when Sersha looks at this video, yeah, she can say, I was I the one. You were the one. You were the one. Cohen King was the one who took my first year's baby picture. Yeah. Right? You said, yeah, first year's baby. First birthday party. First birthday party. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Very well. And uh, the whole Waldorf community is a very tight-knit a uh, friendly community, so uh, when Miss Clarkin was out on maternity leave, uh, a bunch of people made meals and brought them to her. Wow. So, yeah. That's uh, awesome. That, and then, uh, Miss Lebeck, like I said, is suffering from cancer, but our whole class and the classes that she's taught have been very supportive of her, and uh, we've gone and visited her a few times. Um, like I said, we hosted a birthday party for our, our, our class um, and sang to her. Um, I used to I used to dance the waltz with her. So in fourth grade, after school, I just go in there and we'd sing Edelweiss and dance, and then I'd leave. <laughs> nice! Wow, that's yeah. that's beautiful. Oh, those memories must mm -hmm. be just cherishable. Is that a that's the word, right? Cherishable? Cherishable. I don't know. I think so. Those must be it's cherished it's memories for you. Yes. Don't say that. Cohen, from your perspective as a student, what resources are necessary to have at school that support students' mental, social, emotional health and well-being? Uh, so, first of all, I just want to say um, counselors. School counselors are super important, and uh, it's just really good to have someone to talk to. Um, if you're having any kind of problem, just go and talk to someone and they can help you through it. And that's what the counselors are for, is just to be there to help. Um, so those are probably like the best resource to have at a school, is just someone to talk to 
if you're going through trouble, if you have hard times, if you're if there's like bullying going on, just tell someone, and uh, they can help you through it. So that there's also a lot of teachers who can help as well. Um, like I had a friend who would often go to a teacher and they would help them. So uh, teachers can also help through through stuff if you just tell someone. So. Uh, that's the main thing. Another thing that could help is education, is knowing what's going on with you. So educating about mental health, um, and if people if people know what to look out for, they will know like if they know what depression is or something, they might search for help uh, if they realize that oh, these are a lot of. Uh, common symptoms of someone who is depressed, maybe I should go seek out help. So, if you are informed about, like, what this is, uh, you're more likely to, to actually realize that you are suffering from some condition. Sure. So, yeah. Throughout your schooling thus far, have you felt like, have you felt relatively prepared and have a sense of understanding of of mental health, mm-hmm. of your physical health and well-being, and how you know relationships affect your your overall well-being and all of that. Yeah, um, I mean, I've never had any like encounters with bullying or anything like that because uh, Waldorf it, it's a very small school, so if someone did anything, you would know immediately that it's them. So. Um, that was, that was one of the things. I don't have many encounters with stuff. Um, but I do understand a lot of it. Uh, I've met people who suffer from certain conditions and things like that. Uh, so, like I said, uh, education is, is very good to have. So, yeah, uh, yeah. And how, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, one, I'm curious how you gathered that education through actual schooling or through your own kind of research or um, it sounds like partly just experiences with uh, friends or people that are around you that you you just get to know what some of those things mean? uh, Yeah, so it's a lot of uh, experiences and then also uh, education from school. Like we had health, um, which was taught by was Kimmel, Allison Kimmel, and uh, that really uh, taught me a lot about mental illnesses and uh, mental health, physical health, uh, social, emotional, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that was like the main source of education for me. Mm. That was what really made me know what I'm looking for. Uh, if I if I see certain things, I know what it is now. Not necessarily like fully what it is because a lot of symptoms and stuff vary depending on who has certain conditions um, but still I know generally what things are and so that course really helped out with the education so yeah health is a very good thing to have in school <laughs> shout out to all the health teachers out there yeah including Allison Kimmel Allison so. Kimmel Right on. Okay, Cohen, what advice would you share with your younger self? Um, something that I learned this summer is I didn't realize before, but I really enjoy when I'm conti- when I'm continuously doing things. So uh, I don't like being bored at all. So uh, with with myself. I think it's really good to, like, uh, do things outside of the house, uh, even some things inside the house, like on my computer I've been working with a team of people to develop a game, and uh, that's really helpful. Every day I've been talking to people online, and I've been helping organize, like, a server of, uh, we have over 300 members in our server, so we have, uh, quite a large following um and so I've, I've learned a lot of like how to interact with people online uh 
there's a lot of different kinds of people online. There's people who are completely anonymous and like some people are just really mean online. Some people are super nice. Uh, and I'm happy to say I've had a lot of encounters with people who are really nice. So good. Yeah. Glad to hear that. So. so advice that you would share with your younger self is keep going. Keep, keep going. on moving. Keep and, on. Uh, yeah. Keep on uh, learning new things. You had mm-hmm. mentioned something about so that. Learning, learning new things is always really fun. Uh, so I love to learn new skills. Uh, that's one thing that I like with coding is there's always something else to learn. Uh, anytime you make a mistake, you always learn from that mistake. Uh, like once you write some piece of code, you go back and debug it and you look through everything that you've written and if there are any errors with it, now you know that that error exists and how to fix that error. And sometimes it happens multiple times, but that's just better practice. <laughs> and um, Growth mindset right there, Cohen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, learning new things and also finding a purpose. That was one of my big things, um, is try to find something that I really enjoy doing. So, uh, like coding, writing, and 3D modeling. Those are my those are my three main things that I love. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of that this summer, and I've also been working out, but I'm not like super uh, set on that. I mean, I I do like it, so uh, I'll continue doing that. But uh, yeah, right on. So I have a few things that I like doing. Uh, I also like piano, and so music is a huge part of my life. My mom went to Berkeley College of Music, uh, and so she plays piano, she sings, my brother sings as well, mm-hmm. and uh, he's been doing some jobs on Fiverr, and uh, he, uh, do you know what Fiverr is? I don't. It's, it's a program where people can demonstrate their skills, and people can pay them to do like little jobs. Um, so they're usually like jobs on the computer like there's a whole music section of it there's people who do like voice acting and people who do all kinds of stuff and uh it's called fiverr because originally it started out where people would just pay five dollars for someone to do something and five dollars is the minimum price that you can pay someone Hmm. uh i'm pretty sure that's what it is so um you pay five dollars people can uh for people to do something and so uh Atticus has been singing on the fiber and uh, he's really good at singing. Like he'll sing all over the house. It's uh, and he's super good. So um, he sang for someone, and they gave him a seventeen dollar tip, and uh, which that's uh, I can't remember what their base fee was or like what they, their base thing that they paid him was, sure. but it was like over fifty percent. So they gave him a huge tip. Wow. And then they came back to him for two other songs, I think. That's great. And, uh, the last one that he sang, they gave him a twenty dollar tip. So that's yeah. You're doing something right, Atticus. Yeah. Keep on keeping on. Keep doing mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So that's so music. Great. Music is a really big part of my family. Yeah. Uh, at my family reunion uh, this summer, I sang a song that uh, it was an arrangement that I had made. Uh, a mix between um, Don't Worry, Be Happy and uh, what's the song called? Um, I woke up this morning smiled at the rising sun hmm. three little birds uh, yeah yeah I don't, I don't, I don't remember, remember I, don't, I don't know the name of it but I, I recognized it just by those Either few words way, that you said you guys might know it so <laughs> yes, um. yes and that's great because I was going to ask invite you to sing a little bit but so, you already did it yeah. you, I mean so, I was going to sing some more but that was great so uh, yeah so we did a mix between Don't Worry Be Happy and that song and uh, I remember I made that just because me and my mom were in the car and I was just whistling Don't Worry Be Happy and then I realized oh that would actually go really well with that song so nice. yeah. very cool so we sang that and it worked out awesome alright is there anything else that you would like to share with educators watching or students watching hmm uh, I don't have 
much to say. So, uh, are you sure? <laughs> Here, my book is on Amazon. But that's what I have to say. How much is it? It's five dollars on Amazon. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm mm -hmm. And you can just search King's Tales. Uh, Cohen King. Yeah. I found it. It was the first link when I typed in those four words. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. It's, four, it's a Although, solid four ninety nine. I if think. If you if you try to type in just Cohen King, it comes up with Corn King because there's a book called Corn King. So corn King. The Corn King. Oh, the Corn and so, King. So that book kept coming up anytime I try to type in Corn King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. That's funny. You know. Cohen, who did you shout out to today? Uh, Sean Glantz, Uta Lubeck, and Kirsten Clerken. Um, so those were my my three main uh, shout outs. The like big uh, teachers in my life. Yeah. Thank you to all three of you for having such a positive impact in Cohen's life and for preparing him to get to uh, where he is now and, and you can say that you've published a book yeah how does that I mean how does that feel um I don't know but technically I think technically I'm a, pro, a professional writer now that I've published a book uh so that's interesting to say at the the ripe old age of 15 the ripe old <laughs> age of 15 the question is, Cohen, will you write more, you think? Do you see do more books in the future? I think I will. Um, I've really enjoyed writing. I haven't written in a while, but I do have an idea for a novel in mind. Hmm. Um, it's been an idea that I've had since I was like seven. Oh. Uh, so it's a world that I've been creating for a very long time. I have multiple extensive documents on all these plot points for it characters um I, I even have before i even knew how to spell spell i was starting to write this book so um, i have i have this little like uh notebook thing it's really fancy looking actually it has like a bunch of designs on it and if you open it up it's everything's misspelled uh i think i've i probably spelled like three words correctly in it but uh, in like first grade, I started writing this thing, and uh, yeah, so that's I have this little book written, and it's it's just like a chapter, but yeah. Wow, so. literally the the stories that you have written in your life, whether it's partly inspired by your life story or all of the imagination that's going on inside your head. That's I just, cool. uh, oftentimes I will, like, almost get overwhelmed with how many ideas I have in my head, and I will, like, sit down somewhere and just think about what's going on. Um, I really need to start writing again, because that's a really good way for me to get these ideas out, uh, on paper. I haven't written in a while, but... Uh, the main reason for that is because I've been 3D modeling stuff, so I've been making different weapons and stuff on, online. You've been you've been literally bringing these ideas to to life, kind to uh, yeah some some of these concepts, so, rather than written and written on a page and then coming to life in your mind. Yeah, you have been creating 3D. What are, what are some of your favorite 3D objects to, to make so far? Uh, so, for now, I've just been making, like, weapons for this game that I've been uh, creating. Mm -hmm. So I made... The, the best one that I've made is an axe. And it's this, like, one-handed axe that has a dragon on it. And it has this, like, ice dragon. So Ooh. I, uh, I realized I can make anything pretty much anything as long as I have a reference for it so I just had a reference for the dragon and the axe blade and I made this really nice looking axe so yeah very cool very cool 
All right, Cohen, thank you so much for being part of this Educator Chipotle Challenge by doing an Educator Shoutout interview and making it known that those three educators in particular have made a difference in your life. Yeah. Well, and thanks for yeah. having me on the, on the show. <laughs> You're so welcome. You are so welcome. And I, I look forward to other creations, whether it's in book form or game form or app form or performance based, uh, like uh, who knows what Cohen King will do next. Gosh, but does it like when you say your name, when, when you hear your name, does it sound like, gosh, yeah, that's a strong name that holds a lot of power? Uh, not Maybe, really. No? no? Because, okay. Well, I was named after the Coen Brothers, so um, it's, it's interesting when I see a Coen Brothers film to see my, my name in the credits. Uh, but um, generally, I don't like think of my name too much. It's kind of a short name, but I do enjoy it. It's a good name. I like it. I especially like my last name because it feels very powerful. King. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Yeah. You would be an equitable, kind, just good-hearted king. <laughs> I think. I mean, you are a good-hearted, compassionate, all, all the things king now with that name. Thank you. <laughs> but if you were the ruler of some community, I could see you being very um, personable mm-hmm. and well liked my, uh, my my dad used to have this car that it was really old and my stepmom painted it uh, so she painted all this stuff she painted like grease lightning on it mm-hmm. and one of the things she painted the, she painted the entire side uh, black and yellow checkers like a mm. taxi cab and uh and it said the king cab, where everyone is a king. But she put the A in the king too close, so it sounded like the king cab, where everyone is aching. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so. Oh. Yeah. The difference that a little space Just can a make. Little, a little space. You know? Gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. All right, folks. It's been Kayla, Ebby, and... Cohen King. Cohen King. Mm-hmm. Over and out. Educator Chipotle Challenge. Educator Shout Out Interview. Go to Amazon and check out King's Tales. See you later. You can buy your own copy of King's Tales by Cohen King on Amazon. How cool is that? I'm so proud of you, Cohen.